people that are creating these regulations, they're not fully understanding the, you know, the entire space. So even that's going to change. Um, so I, I think we're just really early and there's no really telling what, what the next moves are going to be. Just stay in your convictions. Hi everyone, we have Randy of Mystine Crypto joining us in the video today. So, uh, Randy, I, I'm so curious about this. Can you can you brief everyone about your journey? Because I'm um, looking at you online and talking to you prior to this. It's it's just so fascinating that you started investing at an early age when uh, a ton of people that are the same age as you don't even care about investing. And even a lot of people who are much massively older than you uh, are not even thinking about it. Thank you for having me, first off. You're really cool, Marvin. And so my dad introduced me to crypto and Bitcoin when I was 13. So this was six years ago. And, you know, I, you know, sat on it for a little while. I didn't really listen until I was 16, until my dad finally sat me down and said, OK, let's do a Bitcoin transaction. At least see if you like it, if you could use it. I was like, OK, sure. So I just saw how easy it was. My mind was absolutely blown all i had to do was scan a qr code copy and paste an address and that's it i could send money to anyone anywhere in the world as long as i had an internet connection um and i thought this was going to change the way we transacted forever so it wasn't even the investment side that drew me into bitcoin at the start it was more the ease of use and how different we were going to transact in the future when you experienced it um wasn't it too hard to understand first all of the intricacies about it because a lot of people now when they hear bitcoin why should I actually believe in it? It's it's not backed up by anything. Um, what's what's the merit into that cryptocurrency? I mean, you could say the same about the dollar in some instances, but Bitcoin cryptocurrency, it gives you the opportunity to be your own bank, which I which was another reason why I was very drawn into the space. The fact that we don't, like I said, we could just transact with anyone and anywhere in the world as long as we have an internet connection instantly. We don't have to ask for permission. We don't have to answer questions as to where our funds are going or why we're spending it at that certain time at that certain date. We should be able to freely use our assets. So, you know, that's why I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is really important. And especially because it has a finite supply. There's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin. Learning that at a very, very young age, what was your approach into uh, into all of this? How did you how did you start? Were you putting everything that you had in it? Because if I was your age also, and I would, uh, it was my parents backing. I would think that okay, I'll invest. If it goes to zero, I can still live with my parents and still eat every day. So, what was your approach in all of this? My approach was fairly simple. I was only sixteen. I had like two hundred bucks in my savings account, and I saw there that my. $200 was always $200. I never earned interest on that. And I saw my purchasing power was starting to diminish and due to inflation and all of uh, the other good economy stuff. So I was like, okay, now let me try and put my $200 into Bitcoin. And I saw that I would have my $200 appreciate in an asset that I truly own that's not controlled by anybody else. So it was just like a really good light bulb golden moment for me. Did you continue adding? How, how did it normally go when you when you get, I don't know, allowance or income, uh, what was your ration? What was your rationale into uh, into put into putting it in? Do you plan to stop? How do you want to go about that? I don't plan to stop. Um, so a common strategy used in the crypto space, which is, which is something I'd recommend for maybe somebody younger or someone starting to get into the space, is dollar cost averaging DCA into the market, which means to buy Bitcoin or whichever crypto you choose daily, weekly, monthly, annually, up to you. But dollar cost averaging, I think, is a great way, especially for young kids. I was, you know, working a part time job in high school. I was, you know, earning different streams of income. So I would just take whatever money at the end of the week that I could spare and put that in into Bitcoin and crypto. You mentioned a very, very good uh, topic to talk about um, cost averaging. And the main context of that is you put a specific amount on a regular period of time. There are some pros and cons to it, but I do believe it works. My question is this, October, November, 2021, markets, markets were at its highest. What was your frame of mind at that point? Were you still comfortable um, accumulating? Um, that's one. Then second, as the markets continue to peel off and, and, and drop also right now, um, what's, what's also your frame of mind uh, a few months after and a lar with a large discrepancy of the price? 
I think if you're dollar cost averaging, you're buying into the market no matter where the price of Bitcoin is. So either way, I was happy because again, I'm trading my fiat dollars for Bitcoin, meaning that I now have money that nobody can take from me, that it's it's money that is truly mine. So that's what matters to me more than the dollar value at some points is just owning Bitcoin and being able to have that digital cash that again, no one can take from me. That's truly mine. I mean, buy, no one wants to buy at the top, right? But the beauty of dollar cost averaging, especially for newbies, is that you don't have to worry about where the market's at. You're just accumulating this asset over a period of time that you're comfortable with. Did you ever get emotional once you saw it start to drop also um did you ever get fearful or you were thinking about okay uh i'm, I'm doing this for the long term it doesn't really matter i'm doing it for the long term i mean if you're looking at bitcoin history i've actually made a video on this as well Bitcoin dropping 80 plus percent, that's normal. That's history for this asset. And whenever it drops 80%, eventually it does go back up and surpass that all time high. Of course, that's not financial advice, but it is the history that I've observed, especially, you know, being observing crypto since 2016, I've seen the bear market of 2017, 2018, and then, you know, it went back up to 69K. Now it's it went down around 80, 70%. That's fine. That's history. I expect that. And I'm still comfortable in my position. Got it. So should it drop further, you're more comfortable still given that also you've seen it happen over and over and over. Yeah, that's just the history of the cycle. If it drops more, then cool. Then it gives other people opportunity to get cheaper Bitcoin. In the entire space of cryptocurrencies, a lot of people talk about Bitcoin as, okay, it's a sort of value, but it doesn't really do anything as much. It's 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 slow. It's not as scalable. What would you say about that? Or, or are you looking into other... Um, technologies as well that might be newer, faster, more scalable compared to Bitcoin? That's a good question. I think, you know, there's a lot of things to say about the Bitcoin topic itself because, of course, you know, you're going to have people that are like, oh, yeah, like transact in Bitcoin, which I do as well. Like sometimes I do spend Bitcoin on certain things just because, you know, it's digital cash. I want to use my cash on something. Um, but, you know, People use Lightning Network in El Salvador where Bitcoin is legal tender. People are using Lightning Network. Um, it works pretty efficiently. I think another cool option would be something like Litecoin where it is faster, it's cheaper, and it still has that finite supply of 84 million. So I think that could be another option if you're looking to transact. What's your biggest fear for Bitcoin or at least the entire cryptocurrency market? Do you ever think that regulation might happen it could it could take it all away or they could you can't stop bitcoin um you have to shut down the internet but they can take they could take out off ramps into it uh, in in and off to it what's what's your greatest fear uh, that could possibly happen that could disrupt the crypto markets in general i don't believe i have any fears right now because bitcoin, like you said bitcoin is inevitable right the blockchain's inevitable um so there really is no stopping it and if you know people are fearful that maybe this isn't the market for you but i think bitcoin cryptocurrency it's inevitable there's no stopping it um i do think that you know people are going to try to regulate but even at that point it's just like people that are creating these regulations they're not fully understanding the you know the entire space so even that's going to change um so i i think we're just really early and there's no really telling what what the next moves are going to be just Stay in your convictions. You're 19 now, 20? 19. Are you still in school? No. Why are you not in school? Are you just focusing in investing? Um, What, what was your approach to that? And I, I guess, are your parents okay with everything that's going on as well? My, my parents are supportive. My dad's very supportive. And, you know, I wanted to just keep going with crypto because crypto is my passion. Crypto is what I want to do forever. And I think that, you know, this is just a really early industry. And I my job and what I, you know, kind of made my job is to educate everyone. What I want to do is be responsible for kind of bringing Gen Z into crypto, you know, bring apart a whole revolution. And that's what I really want to help. I want to help this industry progress. So that's what I'm kind of dedicating myself to. And for those watching this that you think are, Gen Z or maybe even younger than you um, and maybe they are going through this thought process also should I go to college should I pursue my pa passion or should I just focus on investing that hopefully one day it, it goes up also that it could take care also of all of my needs how would you speak to them I think you should do whatever you want. I think that's like the beauty of this world. That's the beauty of crypto is that you could do whatever you want. If you have, if you want to go to college, if there's something you're like, oh, I need to go to college for that, go to college. But at the same time, if you don't want to go to college, if you have something in your mind that you want to do, then why not try it? You know, um, I think especially in Gen Z, we're very digitally native and we're very like free. I, we're very free thinking, I think this generation and even kids younger where the internet kind of just opened our mind to like kind of break these geographic 
practical barriers to break these barriers of the traditional ways of nine to five and things like that. A lot of younger kids, millennials, Gen Z, we're finding different ways to find work. And I think, you know, if you want to go that traditional route, go that traditional route. But if you want to try something, then try something as well. Like I'm never going to turn somebody down from trying out their passion. I think if you have something in your heart, then at least try it because you might regret it in the future.